Hello, my creative friends. Welcome to this video, which is mostly about um, trying to enjoy the weather, uh, nature before winter comes, and also recovering and having downtime between art markets this time of year. So I, you are watching me go on a little nature walk, which is going to be the basis for a painting that I'm going to do. And then a little bit later in the video, we're going to go on an adventure together. So hope that sounds chill and fun. And yeah, you can look at these inspirational images that uh, were what I was using to base my painting off of. And I spend a lot of time walking out in nature, looking for new trails and things like that. And I'm constantly looking at the shapes that I'm seeing out in nature. That's what forms a lot of the basis of my artwork is shapes uh, and textures, since I do a lot of textured work. Uh, I'm gonna do a palette knife painting, actually. This is one of the areas I've been enjoying walking around lately. There's a lot of little bits of nature poking around. There's mushrooms and berries and birds and water. So little artist paradise, really. And you can see it's not super autumn looking at this point. I did film this a couple weeks ago when it was still earlier in the season. It's actually snowed yesterday, so no chance anything looks this pretty anymore. But uh, different parts of Nova Scotia where I live have pretty different uh, accelerations into the season. So this is sort of on the south shore near the city. And then later I'm gonna go to the valley and see the beautiful autumn colors that are over there. Now right here we're looking at a tree that I really like. This is what I actually ended up painting. It's kind of near this dam. I'm not really sure what it's called, but um, there's this, just this tree hanging over the water and I thought it was very pretty. I took some still photographs that I referenced later and uh, took those home to work on a canvas. It's been a very weird season for me. Um, just getting outside a lot has been really helpful, but it's been a pretty rough autumn. I don't know. I, I hope yours has been good. How's it been? Let me know. Uh, I haven't made a ton of videos this season, but um, I hope to remedy that. But I just, that makes me feel like we haven't caught up in a while. So how have you been? This nature walk kind of, oh, there it ended. Uh, now I'm working in my painting corner, which you may have seen my other video where I set this up. And let me tell you, very much enjoying it. And I've got some canvases I bought at Winners that were a really good price and a very good quality, so I'm trying to burn through them um, because it's just kind of indulgent to have a lot of canvases lying around. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> but it's nice having this space where I can mix paints. I'm going to do a base coat or what do you call it? I don't know, a base coat? on this canvas. And when I do those, I usually just use these cheap uh, craft paints because I'd have to really water down a lot of my nice paints in order to fill this kind of space. But yeah, so I'm using, and I usually use neon colors as my base colors because I find them uh, pleasant to look at. And I also like that it brightens up my paintings. I can, I, I don't know, I find that they tend to look a little bit muddy if I start with a more neutral um, base, but that's just my art style. That's not professional advice or anything. Uh, so I did a pencil sketch and uh, the other good reason to use the thin craft paint is that you can see the pencil through it. Yeah, I did actually spill quite a lot of this orange paint on the plant that is underneath my easel, so um, I didn't put that in, but just a little behind the scenes tidbit to know that uh, I made a huge mess, but it's okay. Plant hasn't complained. One of the reasons that I really like doing palette knife art, and I'm by far, I'm certainly not an expert. It's something that I'm, I've been just learning this year. Um, and by learning, I mean just like trial and error. I haven't formally learned anything. I never do really. Uh, it just feels like the antithesis of digital art. And I love digital art. I do it all the time. Um, I would say that most of the stuff that I have up online is digital. But there's something about palette knife 
painting with some thick acrylic that just feels a little bit more like sculpting. I don't know. It's, I, I also find it a very forgiving medium because you can really make mistakes and then just either scrape it off or slap some more paint on over top. I bought this um, paint palette, this clear acrylic one you see uh, at Michael's and I absolutely cannot peel the paint off it for the life of me. I don't know why the white ones you can peel the paint off of, but this clear one, it is stuck, which is why I'm having to put all these paints on top of the dry stuff. Uh, not really ideal because it makes it a bumpy surface for blending with the knife, but um, that's just that's just what we're doing. So. Um, yeah, don't I, I don't recommend buying the clear clear palette if you are in the market for one. I also normally print off my photos that I'm using as a reference, but uh, for some reason I didn't, and I just kept having to wake my phone up. Um, not not my not my top uh, move, but that's that's what I did here, and I decided that I didn't want to do realistic colors overly like I, I mean the background well you'll see how this turns out should I even talk over it I don't know maybe I won't but I wanted some parts of it to be fantastical and other parts of it to be more realistic I also find that when I'm doing pictures that have trees with some sky poking through it doesn't really look like much until you start to fill in all those gaps and then the picture kind of comes together that's something else I really like about palette knife art is that it doesn't really look like anything good until you're done. So that's an easy way to know when you're done, when it starts looking good, <laughs> which is not how other art normally is. When I do watercolor stuff, you really have to restrain yourself from overworking it. I don't feel like palette knife work gets overworked, at least not yet in my experience. Uh, when it's done, you just kind of have to stand back across the room and look at it and be like, yeah, that, that, that's a picture. I've also only really had success doing landscapes and nature pictures with the palette knife. I've tried to do some like animals and stuff like I, I do in my other subjects and they just look a little bit weird. So I think it's more of a, a nature and landscape medium for me. At least at this point. I did mention that I've been doing some shows. I had a really good one uh, that was postponed because of a hurricane, but it did finally happen. It was the uh, Maritime Makers show, I think. I'm really bad at remembering the names of these things. It was on my Instagram in any case, but it's already over. so. Uh, it was a wonderful show and I met a lot of cool people, had a lot of sales, which was very exciting. Um, but I never really end up selling a lot of originals when I go to shows. I mean, I, mean I, did, I didn't bring this one. A lot of the originals I do are kind of more personal, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just because I have a lot of other things on my table. Maybe if I prioritize the originals, but I'm never too worried about selling them. They're more just there, I don't know, to catch the eye make people stop and look at my work because seeing a big textured painting is kind of cool in person. And that's how This is how this one turned out. I really like it and I like how the, I don't know, the shapes of the leaves is kind of lumpy. I don't know, really I liked it and the reflection looked nice too. So happy with this one. There's me, happy with this one. And I did end up painting the sides of the canvas red. Um, because I'm into canvas edges being contrast lately. Good morning. I just woke up from a 12 hour sleep because yesterday was a really big art show. It was great. It was like a seven hour show, but I had to be there like hours before to set up and stuff. So. Really great show. Thank you to anybody who came out who may be watching. Uh, today, I was planning on just hanging out at home and relaxing and doing chores. It's very messy in here as a result of like show prep and stuff, but um, it's really nice out and I wanna go to the valley. So I'm gonna do that and I'll take you guys with me a little bit. 
This is kind of a very impromptu decision, so I'm gonna go get dressed and cleaned up, and then we will just drive up there and see the fall colors and drink a latte and write in my journal and maybe go for a walk in the beautiful weather or up in the botanical gardens. I don't know. I kind of wanted to go up to Acadia University um, on a weekday so I could see some of my professor friends, but um, I'll just go again. I'll go twice. I can go whenever I want. So uh, yeah, let's go. I want to go make the most of nice weather. Let's do that. for me. I used to teach a class here. Uh, it's called Fountain Commons and I worked at Acadia after I graduated from my master's here. Um, I've been to a lot of universities. Uh, I, I went to five in total. That's not saying I got five degrees but I went to five total <laughs> and uh, this is the one I, I worked at after I graduated most recently and I taught a class and my office was in that building with the ivy on it but it's just I think it's one of the most beautiful campuses. I filmed this awkward stair footage so you could hear some of the classical music playing. They do like these concerts on Sundays in the one of the really pretty buildings on campus. So I'll just let you see it. Uh, those shows are open to the public. It's not like weird that I'm back on campus to listen, but I still felt really awkward kind of wandering past. Uh, I used to go sit in that building and study or work on papers and stuff. And there's a big fireplace in the winter, so it's very cozy. But this is the botanical gardens that are outside, um, the Irving Botanical Gardens. I can't remember the full name, but I used to come out here too and study. There's also a greenhouse, which I didn't visit, but it's just a beautiful spot. And this was a good chance for me to bust out my nice camera and just try taking some fall footage. So if you've, if you've uh, been bearing with me with my phone footage up until now, I did just switch to my other camera, but um, eventually I'm gonna get a new phone with even better camera for sort of the on the go stuff. 
but I love it out here. There are trails. It is very inspirational and I have come out here many times with sketchbooks and paints and just had a sit, but um, I didn't have all that stuff with me on this little adventure. I guess being back here on campus and also just thinking about things in general. If you've made it this far in this video, you clearly are, are happy to sit around and listen to me talk. So I'll, I'll just say that I never really intended to become an artist. That was never my job. Uh, I was uh, working to be a professor of classical studies uh, with a focus on English literature and classical reception. So the way that the ancient world shows up in modern novels or whatever you want to call modern, that was my research focus. And I was doing a PhD in it. And teaching and doing things like that but I dropped out because uh, I actually had uh, health stuff that I kind of had to prioritize so in doing that and leaving that career even I was still really young when I left it I was like 27 I think uh, but it really gave me the opportunity to say like what actually makes me happy and that's actually what my doctor told me he said like you need to be happy figure out what makes you happy which is not an easy thing to do Lately, I've been reading a lot of books about happiness to try and figure out like, what does it mean? And I, I maybe that seems like really reductive, but it's not that simple, is it? Like, I guess I thought of happiness as being like a state you just achieve and then you're just a happy person, but I don't think being a happy person is in the cards for most people. I think we have to search for the happiness within the bigger moments. And I feel that being back on campus. I'm happy on a campus. It's familiar, it feels like home, especially this one, and it's so pretty, uh, even though it's, it's fall when things are starting to fade. But I still like making my art best of all. I think that's what makes me happiest, and I feel free and creative. And I feel very lucky to be in a place in life where I can prioritize being happy. Not everyone has that privilege and I'm trying not to take it for granted, but it's hard when, you know, life is also not just all good stuff. It's not all finger painting and filming flowers, but sometimes it is that. And I'm trying to be grateful for the times when it, when it is just being creative and having fun. crisis averted. I found my painting in my book. I had left them at the last shop I went to and I went back and they still had them behind the counter and it was 15 minutes before they closed. So it's a good thing I realized that the burdens I had been carrying for half the day were suddenly not in my possession. Um, yeah, really nice day though. Uh, I love Wolfville. I miss being here a lot. Being here today made me want to move back. Um, but I don't know, about moving here. Um, housing was really difficult when I was a student here. So housing when you're not a student, probably even worse. Um, anyways, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go to a farmer's market. I'm going to go to a farmer's market and get some apples, maybe some seasonal produce. Let's see what we find.
probably shouldn't have turned the car on before I was going to film. But anyways, done at the farmer's market, got my giant bag of apples, some bread, some cookies, and I'm feeling pretty tired, so I think we're going to head back to the city. Thank you for joining me on this little adventure. Uh, it was restorative and inspirational for moi. <laughs> Thank you.